Hey, hi, hello, and welcome back to the channel, or if you are new here, welcome to the channel. My name is SJ. I'm an adult doll collector who just wants to talk about dolls, and I thought it would be fun today to show you guys my spooky doll collection in honor of spooky season coming up, so let's get started. Also, all of these dolls, we have named them, and we have given them some kind of elaborate backstory, so I'm going to be telling you guys their names and their little backstory yes this is probably completely weird and people are gonna sit here and say oh my god she is so weird but truthfully is anybody normal i don't think so we are all weird in our own ways so on to the dolls okay ignore the bad lighting because we are in my hallway right now but this is anna and she is actually pretty tall so but hi odie this is Anna, and her backstory is, this is basically what happened to Anna after Elsa hit her in the head with the ice when they were kids, and the trolls weren't able to save her. Um, we got her from Home Depot, and I believe she is, like, motion activated. Yeah. Oh, what happened? Uh, funny story the first night that we had her and brought her home I did not realize she was motion activated until she was sitting in the hallway and she was going off like every 10 minutes and it was because my cats were running through the hallway and setting her off so she basically still remains off as you can see pepper is like what the hell is this thing yes Maybe you guys remember from a previous video where I showed him off where I had basically rescued him. I ran in front of a semi-truck to rescue him off of a busy road. His name is Pepper Joe and he is pure chaos. Pure chaos. And he's also a polydactyl cat. Seven toes on one paw, six on the other. Yeah. Who is that, huh, Pep Pep? My pepperoni. Next up, we have Lucy. Again, she's kind of tall too. So my dad gave me birthday money one year because my birthday is like right around the month of Halloween, like right before the month of Halloween. And he said, here, buy yourself something you want. I went to Spirit Halloween because I love that store. And I picked out a spooky doll. So like I said, her name is Lucy. Uh, her backstory is she was lost. She was a lost child in Spirit Halloween and never found her way out. So, yep, that's Lucy. She is not motion activated, um, but here is what her face looks like. And she does like kind of have like eyes or like, it's not just holes in her head. Uh, she can move her arms but she cannot move her feet. She is just, you know, just all like solid plastic. But yep, this is Lucy. Her hair is a mess, but I think that just adds to the creepiness of Lucy. Next up, we have our little Fuggler collection. Now, I don't know if these count as creepy dolls, but when we have people come over and they see these things sitting on the chair, they're like, you need to move these before I sit down because they're actually creeped out by them. So. These are just some of the ones we have. LA has some in her room. Um, I got these at Walmart and, oh, the garbage truck's here. <laughs> got these at Walmart and Meyer a few years ago, like I think back in 2020, they were all on sale for like five and $7. And sadly, these aren't like released in the US anymore, which really, really sucks, but this was the first one we got this little teddy bear with his little button eyes and his creepy little teeth but what i really love about these guys is they have a little button booty hole like all of them have little button booty holes that just adds to the creepy weirdness of them and i love them 
Okay, we are back in the doll room where the lighting is a little bit better to show off the smaller creepy dolls in my collection. So this is Baby Grr. He's just like a little like blow mold, I think is what they call him. But the tag on the bottom of him says Evil Baby, but we named him Baby Grr. Uh, he used to sit outside on our stoop, so he might be a little bit dirty, but I was afraid that over time, like once winter comes, I was afraid that he was going to get like all dirty. So we brought him inside. So baby Gurr is a zombie baby. He was born to a woman who got bit by a zombie, turned into a zombie and gave birth to a zombie baby. So yeah, baby Gurr. He doesn't do anything. Like I said, he's just your basic like little blow mold. They sell a lot of these at Spirit Halloween. We got him, I think from Walmart or maybe Meyer. but yeah, he wasn't that expensive. I think he was like $15, which really when I think about it, that is pretty expensive for these guys, but it's fine. So everybody say hi, baby girl. Next up we have... Polly. So this is Polly. She is a little doll. She is covered in cat hair. Um, this is what she looks like. She is motion activated. I know your secret. I know your fear. Don't mind me. I'm just trying to hide them from me. So she says a bunch of creepy stuff. Her hair again is a mess. I have found that all these creepy dolls that you can get around Halloween time like this have really bad hair. Like honestly, it's just a net that they glued onto her hair and then glued the strands of hair on. So yeah, this is Polly. Her backstory is she was born in an insane asylum and died at a young age and just haunts the halls of the insane asylum. Yeah. I'm telling you, these dolls have like really weird, sad, elaborate backstories. Okay, and I introduced this doll in my little Halloween haul, but she officially has a name and a backstory now. So this is Amy. And her backstory is she grew up in like the old days, like... 1800s or whatever and she fell down a well i'm telling you these dolls don't have the happiest backstories but now she lives in a farmhouse with a new family and the little girls play with her and probably shouldn't because she might lead them to their demise and then we have poppy and piper the skeleton dolls from walmart because we sit here and we're like, wow, these look like reject, you know, like monster high dolls. We're just making them Skeleta's weird cousins. Like, just the weird, unique cousins of Skeleta and they were rejected from Monster High. I don't know. We haven't quite figured out something for them, but they just, like I've said in the video and everything, and me and LA think they just look so much like reject monster high dolls. Like, the skeleton mold right down to the pointed feet. Yeah, so Poppy and Piper reject monster high dolls that got no love. And her newest doll that we actually found last night. I found her last night sitting in a basket full of scarecrows at Walmart. So this is Baby Wednesday. And it was so cute. We put her in the cart and we put her in the little child where you put like the little toddler in the cart and we put the little belt around her. Yeah, and we walked through the store with her like this. But this is Baby Wednesday. And I think she's cute. I think she's adorable. It looks like she got into like some grape jelly and got it all over her face. That's what we're gonna go with, that it's grape jelly and not something more uh, creepy. But this is what she does. Wednesday 
and we named her that because I don't know she kind of just looks like a little Wednesday to me like with her little pigtails and her little black dress so yep um this was the only one that my Walmart had like I said she was buried at the bottom of like where they keep the little scarecrows in this like little bin full of them but that is how much she was and it's called a head rising doll and if you're interested there is her barcode and as far as a backstory she doesn't exactly have one yet um yeah I don't I don't have a story for her yet but she's got like all these like marks like scratches and scars on her face like going through her eye and everything yeah she's she's kind of creepy but I love her okay so the last doll in my creepy doll collection is actually a doll and not a Halloween prop. So this, this is Emily. Um, if you've watched my video where I showed like the weirdest dolls in my collection, she was in that video and I believe LA named her Emily. I don't know, but she is an actual doll. I don't know from what year, I don't know from where, all I know is she was donated to a thrift store and she just kind of called to me. So she is very old, as you can see, like the scalp and everything is peeling away. The paint is flaking off. Like, as you can see, like her hands are old and then we've got the feet and her outfit is just old and tattered and stained. And then the back right here. Um, there is some writing right here on the back of her neck, but I cannot make it out. LA named her Emily. She said that's what her name is. She believes that this doll is haunted. And when other people come over the house, they think she's haunted, but I think it's just because they look at her and they think she's creepy. I don't know her story. I don't have a story for her. Just because I think at one point she was probably a well-loved toy and maybe at a grandparent's house or something like that and they kept her for so many years and she was probably found in like an attic or basement or something and then she got donated and the paint is peeling off on my finger but yeah she doesn't have a story just because I think at one point she was just a well a very much well-loved toy and I don't want to give her a story I almost want to say I want to wait for her to tell me her story but you know, who knows? But this is Emily and yeah, I take really good care of her just because like I said, I don't, I think she was someone's well-loved doll at one point and she is just so old and I think she's just an amazing like find. Yes, people say she's creepy because her pain is peeling, but I don't want to restore her because I don't know what she's made out of. I don't, I don't know if this is glass, if this is porcelain, you know, but I think she looks fine just the way she is and just looking at her, I can tell she's got a story to tell. I just don't know what it is. But yeah, those are all the creepy dolls in my collection. It's not a huge collection. Oops, sorry, Amy. Did not mean to knock you there. But it's not a big collection. It's quite small because I didn't really get into collecting, you know, creepy dolls until I got Emily. And then I just, every year I just kind of get like, one or two this year I've apparently gotten four but it's fine there's just I I find you know creepy dolls like so unique because it reminds me of like vintage dolls like Emily like you know these vintage porcelain dolls that while I will not and do not collect porcelain dolls every time I look at a porcelain doll at a thrift store or like a vintage store I'm always like wow that's an old doll at one point they must have had a story to tell and yes all of my creepy Halloween dolls have a very morbid sad backstory just because I'm like it's their Halloween dolls I want to give them a creepy backstory but like I said the only one that doesn't have one really is Emily because she's an actual like toy she was someone's toy at one point and hey maybe if they're watching this video and they recognize this doll highly doubt that though but if they are and you recognize this doll tell me about her Tell me her story. What was her name? Maybe I can call her her actual name instead of Emily. But yeah, she has a home with us now. And 
I like to think she's happy. But yes, this is my creepy doll family. I know it's weird. I will be the first to admit that this is the most weirdest thing to collect. But like I said, I don't think anyone's normal. But let me know down below which creepy doll is your favorite. What do you think of creepy dolls? And what do you think Emily's story is? You know, all that fun, weird stuff. Happy spooky season. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. Love you. Bye.